Hi everyone, I'm Sam Kahane and you're watching theCUBE on the ground. Extremely excited for our segment here. Uh, Wasabi just launched last week on Wednesday. We have their co-founder and CEO with us here today on theCUBE. David, thank you for coming on today. Hey, nice to be here, Sam, thank you. So, unbelievably exciting. Um, can you tell the world about Wasabi? So if you know what uh, Amazon S3 cloud storage is, you pretty much know what Wasabi is, except we're one-fifth the price and six times as fast. <laughs> Incredible. So, you know, co-founder and CEO of Carbonite decided to start Wasabi. Um, tell us, why, uh, why, why Wasabi? Well, my, uh, why, why the name Wasabi? Well, well the, the name Wasabi, the name as well. Because it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, um, my co-founder, Jeff Flowers, who's uh, I think one of the great technical geniuses I've ever met in my life, uh, came to me about three years ago with this paper design for a new storage architecture and said, you know, I think, I think we could do something that's going to be far faster and far more efficient in storage than what the cloud providers, Google, Amazon, and Microsoft are doing. And I said, okay, well, you should go check it out. And uh, so he left Carbonite, and uh, we spent about a year, uh, you know, doing design work. And uh, eventually we ended up with this design that was so compelling to me that uh, I decided it was time to, to jump on board and join Jeff again. And this is the uh, sixth company that we founded together since oh, wow. 1980. So, uh, we kind of know how to complete each other's sentences. <laughs> and uh, it's been a winning combination. You know, there's been quite a lot of successes there. Uh, so I'd love to hear about the vision of Wasabi. So my vision of Wasabi and cloud storage in general is that cloud storage ought to be like electricity or bandwidth. It should just be a commodity. You know, right now you have all these silly tiers. You have cold line and near line and standard and and Glacier and, you know, and these artificial tiers that uh, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft have, have made to try to protect their high, high price spread. Um, Wasabi is faster than the fastest of them and it's cheaper than the cheapest of them. So why do you need all these silly things in, in the middle? And it's just like electricity. You know, you go to plug your computer or your blender into the wall, you don't have three different plugs, one for great electricity, one for so-so electricity, and one for crummy but cheap electricity. You know, you just have one. So one size fits almost all, all needs, and I think that's the way cloud storage is going to be as well. So w when we get to that, you know, it'll be best man wins, right? The guy with the best performance and the lowest cost is going to win, and we feel we can compete in that environment. So a buzzword I've been hearing is immutable buckets. Uh, can you tell me about that? Yeah, so that's the one functional difference between Amazon S3 and Wasabi. Otherwise, Wasabi is completely 100% plug compatible with Amazon. You can unplug Amazon, plug in Wasabi, and every all your applications should work. And the other way around, too. I mean, that's part of being a, a commodity, right? Your, your supplier should be interchangeable. but. Uh, immutable buckets is something which uh, is something which really came from our carbonite heritage. Um, we know from carbonite that most data loss is not due to failing disk drives and things like that today. It's stupid mistakes. You know, people accidentally overwrite or delete a file. Uh, it's bugs in application software that cause data to get overwritten or deleted. And then you get things like WannaCry which come in, grabs all the data on your computer, and encrypts it. So immutability means if you store data in an immutable bucket, it cannot be altered and it cannot be deleted. It can't be deleted by you, it can't be deleted by us, and it certainly can't be deleted by a hacker or somebody breaking in from the outside. So, you know, about, uh, I don't know, 10 or 20 years ago, people invented something called the worm tape, write once, read many. And that was an immutable, the really one of the first forms of immutable digital storage. And you know, once you put your data on there, that was it. You know, you, when the tape is full, you take it off, put it in the drawer, and uh, and it's safe. Um, that's not a very good system by today's standards, but you know, we've built immutability into Wasabi, so that when you create a bucket in Wasabi, and for those people who don't know about 
uh, object storage technology. A bucket is like a folder and an object is like a file. When you create a bucket in Wasabi, you can flip a switch and you can say, I want to make this bucket immutable for 10 years, let's say. And anytime you go in and try to erase or alter any of the data that's been written, you just get an error message, which is what the wannabe virus would have, would have gotten had it tried to encrypt that data. So the only downside of immutability is once you put something in there, you can't go in and sort of clean it up. You know, you're going to be stuck paying to store that data for a long time. But at our price, you know, of 0.39 cents per gigabyte per month, I don't think anybody would bother ever trying to clean it up anyway. It's like, <laughs> you know, when's a good time to go empty that U-Haul storage locker? You know, mm -hmm. eh, I'll write another check for 40 bucks and think about it next <laughs> month. <laughs> So your tagline is a hot storage. Hot storage. And so, yeah. it, you know, you launched one week ago mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Uh, tell us about that first week. Uh, what you know? How crazy was it? Well, the only thing we did was some PR. Um, so there were you know a number of articles that appeared about us, and we were expecting maybe 15, 20 companies would come sign up in the first uh, in the first week, do a free trial, but. Uh, by 48 hours in, we were over 150, and by one more day, we were at over 200, and we kind of had to shut down new <laughs> sign-ups because it was just more than we could handle. You know, we were just worried that we would get overwhelmed, and uh, now we're trying to catch up. We just put more storage online uh, this last uh, in the last 24 hours, and now we're kind of working through the stack of people who have. Uh, I don't know how many more have come in since then, but it's been a lot. So we're working through that now to give people their passcodes so that they can get on the system. And hopefully by this time next week we'll be caught up. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thanks, thanks. Uh, and yeah. any you know last words that you want to leave the people with about Wasabi? Well, any time you drop the price of anything by 80%, unexpected things are going to happen you know when when bandwidth suddenly got cheap you got netflix and you know movies over the internet and that kind of stuff uh, which you know people hadn't even dreamed about i'll be really interested to see what people do with with really cheap fast storage um, you know when you think about all these uh, storage intensive apps like pinterest and instagram and and things that involve videos and so forth storage has got to be your biggest cost and most of these apps are free, so the only revenue you're going to get is going to be advertising. I'll bet there are a lot of business models that just won't work at Amazon's prices, but drop those prices by 80%, and now suddenly you say, wow, this could be profitable. I'm not going to invent those apps, but I, you know, I'm sure that some of the people who are signing up for Wasabi today are thinking about things that didn't work in the old regime but with commodity cloud storage at these low prices, starts to make sense. So we'll see. I think it's going to change the world. Yeah, I hope so, and it's going to be exciting to watch. Yeah, it'll uh, be fun. We'll need to catch up again soon and uh, check back in on the growth. But okay. David, thank you for coming on theCUBE today. You're welcome, Sam. Thank you. And CUBE Nation, thank you for watching.